I think the best fun probably was with, as a lear woman on cool bookie course. That was uh, that was very good. So you did have a lot of fun. Met a lot of girls, all from different walks of life. When we got onto the base, we were taken down and there were set area that the rookies were allowed to be in and um, there were two blocks um, for the for the rookies one 42 and 40 41 was the big one that was always full of rookies and then if there were odd ones more they went into 42. The day following the arrival is spent in being equipped with service uniforms and with medical and dental examinations. Great attention is paid to the foot comfort because a large part of the ensuing four weeks is spent on the parade ground. Well, the, the group I was with, we had 59 on our course, course 79, and that was broken up into three units. Uh, and um, you are taught to how to stand uh, in line and uh, to turn left or right, as, as you're told, and be in step, etc. and you're taught to salute and um, all those sorts of things. Um, and then hopefully you become a, a pretty good um, team together. The first drill period, the squad looks very awkward as each girl tries to remember which is her right from her left. A hard task for the first day. Here the instructor shows the correct method of saluting and checks each girl individually. And we had Flight Sergeant Fitzgerald, who was in charge of us, and then um, three corporals who were helping with the with the drilling and whatever. But Fitzy, oh, she was great. She was a terrific person, but boy, she was a tough old bird. <laughs> she was really a great person, Flight Sergeant Fitzgerald. We all admired her tremendously, but she told us we were the worst lot of rookies we ever had, and. Um, and we, we couldn't we, we couldn't march. We were absolutely hopeless. And um, one girl, a very tall girl, who was the the first person in the in our our group when we were marching, and I can remember her getting standing on her toes one day and saying, "Don't move." And here's this poor girl who's <laughs> way 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 over the top of Fitzy's head, and she's standing there shaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah. You had uh, certain times you uh, had to go to meals and uh, and uh, bed time, bed check. We had a bed check every night to make sure that we were all in in the barracks. So, yeah, so quite regimented. Six o'clock in the morning. The girls are awakened by the course orderly. Although early, the air women eagerly start their new day. Within the next one and one half hours. They must tidy their rooms, have breakfast, and then perform any other duties in the barracks as required before their study period begins. Shoe shining emphasizes the importance of the good appearance that is required. At the sound of the whistle, they go on parade, looking spick and span. Definitely in bed by 10.30, I think it was during the week, and midnight on Saturday and Sundays. Air Force blankets always had a blue stripe down them. And to make a bed roll, it consisted of the sheets and the blankets to be folded in certain ways. And then the, another sheet was folded around the outside, but the blue lines had to be totally in line. And uh, you stuck your pillow on top. And on recruit course, we weren't supposed to get out of bed till 6 a.m. And we used to sneak out of bed and bake our bed rolls. And if one of the DIs came along and found you out of bed, they used to undo your bed roll, put you back to bed, and you'd have to get up later and redo it again. <laughs> that was one of the hardest things with, with recruit courses, being sneaky. <laughs> yeah, so we were, it was a training of, of going from civilian life to a service life, which was a very ordered sort of a life and very different from being in a different language, a whole different language, because I know when I got out of the Air Force, I thought, you know, I'm talking a different language. I, I had to sort of learn to speak civvy again. <laughs> In the 
classroom, they learn something of Air Force organization and administration. Here, the training officer is teaching air women to recognize the badges and ranks of Air Force personnel. Because none of us knew when we joined up about um, all the ranking and whatever, what the ranks were and um, what you were allowed to do, who you were allowed to mix with and, you know, you couldn't mix with officers and all of that kind of thing, you know. It had to be within your own rank. Ha ha, who took notice of that? But <laughs> one of our girls married an officer. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then every Friday we used to get injections and then we would go and play ball sports. <laughs> Back in those days, we all lined up and they used the one syringe. All they did was disinfect the, the, the needle. So by the time you got down to the end, it was as blunt as all get out and one of the girls passed out. <laughs> they make their way to the medical section where inoculations offer no fear to them. I think it was typhoid. Um, I got on the bus, sitting next to a gorgeous bloke and just broke down into tears. Cried all the way home on the train. Service life is a complete life in which comradeship, recreation and sport play their full part. joined it was it was quite different it was something I hadn't struck before but it was also very uh, friendly I mean the the officer and the NCOs were all very friendly and the other girls and it was like as if you were on a holiday trip really you were doing something altogether different and um, it was most enjoyable really the things that they got you to do the drill and the sport and all of that was quite interesting really <laughs> As the days pass, the airwomen become more proficient in their drill as they anticipate the climax of their course, the final parade. We now see a marked difference from their first day on the parade ground. So then I returned to Point Cook for officers training and um, that was enjoyable, fun, a lot of fun, but hard work also. And um, a lot of fun because we were also on a course with a lot of crusty old senior Air Force men who were warrant officers and um, flight sergeants. And it was the first time they had a joint female-male. I don't think they ever had one after that. I think it was probably too hard. <laughs> one of my funniest experiences was when I was at East Sale as an airwoman. I used to teach Sunday school. And of course, I used to have to read up on the lessons the day before, before I went to Sunday school to teach the children because I didn't even know them beforehand. <laughs> so that was quite, quite funny. And when I went on officer's training course and they, they, they asked you to stand up and give your background. And one of my background was that, um, you know, I was a Sunday school teacher. And after I'd been on course for a little while, one of the other officers or training officers she said to me, I thought you were a Sunday school teacher. She said, but I've, got, I've changed my mind after a while. You're not a typical Sunday school teacher. <laughs> and one of you had to study on countries. And my countries was Pakistan and India. And I had to get up and talk for a quarter of an hour on Pakistan and India. And that was very interesting. I can't remember anything about Pakistan and India now. <laughs> but I had to sound very sure of it at that time. But it was very, very full on. We went to the courts to, uh, because we, we had to be trained in law. Um, we went to the courts to see how the courts, not that I think that helped us much, but still, we still had to see how the law worked. Um, we went to businesses and factories and yes, interviewed anyone who was uh, in charge of um, staff, 
to get some idea how to manage them. And, um, but I think it was something that you either had the ability to do or you didn't. Not on that course, but later when I was in Canberra, Fairburn, we went on a course on religious instruction where we were all encouraged then on how to um, encourage the girls and how to be good leaders and uh, learn it and what you were doing and able to, to hold yourself in good stead whenever you were, uh, of course you were representing the Air Force in so many ways. Moral leadership courses were held at Rathmines up near Newcastle in, uh, in New South Wales and uh, it was a bit of a lark to go off base for a couple of weeks and uh, but you did a lot of Bible study and uh, uh, it was yeah it was okay but it was a men's base uh, no women were on the base so of course when we went in for meals uh, it was like being in a prison um, thing with them you know hitting the bars with the the uh, cups they used to stamp the, the, the feet and that and um, as we went in so it was a bit daunting, but it was an interesting course, but I'm not a, not a religious person, so uh, I didn't take a lot away from it. <laughs> I'm honest. <laughs> the Air Force is interested only in women who are healthy of body and of mind. And religion, which plays such an important part in most lives, has a correspondingly important place in Air Force life. Every RAF unit has chapels to permit the Air Women to attend regular Sunday services. <laughs> 